We've now reached the start of round 20. The round I informed you would be the final one of this competition. Which one, whichever one of you spells correctly will be declared our 2019 champions. Or sorry, not, not whichever one, whichever of you. <laughs> Whoever of you spells correctly will be declared a 2019 champion. Which, Paul, that means we could have a potential of eight co-champions. And they've always rooted for each other. But now there's not that added dynamic of someone else has to miss for you to win. This is absolutely historic. Rishik the first to be crowned a co-champion. Hello. Hello, Rishik. Auslaut. Auslaut. Can I have all the information? Sure. Auslaut is a noun that consists of two German elements. It means the final sound in a word or syllable. The speller deftly ignored my hilarious sentence and focused with razor precision on the Auslaut of her word. Auslaut. Can you repeat the origin? It's made up of two German elements. Auslaut. Auslaut. A U S L A U T. Auslaut. You are correct. Congratulations, Rishik Gundesri, a 2019 co champion, the sixth champion from California. And you remember what his goal was. Got to do better than the 25th place from last yeah. year. That is a lot better. Incredible performance. Tireless, flawless, incredible. So we are one for one in the 20th co-champion round. Now Aaron Howard. Hi, Aaron. Hi. it's great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Okay. Erisipolis. Erisipolis, can I have the definition please? I beg of you, the definition. <laughs> Erisipolis is an acute febrile disease that is associated with intense local inflammation of the skin and is caused by a hem hemolytic streptococcus. Erisipolis, can I have the definition? Wait, the origin, please. Greek. Erisipolis, are there any alternate pronunciations? Erisipolis. 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 E R Y S I P E L. A.S. Erisipolis. You are correct. Aaron Howard, you have done it. You are a 2019 co-champion, becoming just the second spelling bee champion from the state of Alabama. And on this historic night, we are now two for two of the eight remaining spellers who have a chance to be named champion. And I know there are days over the last four years that she's been competing here where she wondered, is it worth it? That moment tells you the answer. Can Saketh Sundar make it three Hi, for Dr. three? Hi, Saketh. Incredible. Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. Can I have the definition, please? A vine of a small genus of ornamental tropical American woody vines with brilliant red or purple floral bracts. Bougainvillea, can I have all the information, please? Bougainvillea, 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 Bougainvillea is a noun formed in Latin from a French name. It is a vine of a small genus of ornamental tropical American woody vines with brilliant red or purple floral bracts. Alia realized that if she just wore a flower crown made of bougainvillea, no one would notice her extremely ill-advised decision to give herself bangs. Bougainvillea, B-O-U-G-A-I-N-V-I-L-L-E-A, -L -L -E bougainvillea. You are correct. Make it three for three on this historic night. 
Sakis Sundar becomes the first ever champion from the state of Maryland. We are now three for three with the eight remaining spellers who have an opportunity to become declared a co-champion. These spellers have to feel like they're dreaming right now, Matt. This was impossible. This doesn't happen. This crowd is unbelievable. <laughs> it has to be difficult for these spellers to follow up each one. Look at her gun. face. Aiguillette. Aiguillette. Does this come from French? Uh, it's from a Latin-derived French word. Um, does this... Um, can I have the definition, please? A shoulder cord worn by a military aide to the President of the United States and to other high-ranking officers. Um, does this come from the French, dimin French female diminutive ending et? Yes. Does this come from the French word aiguille, meaning a shoulder? I don't see that here. Can, does this come from the French um, aiguille, meaning peak or shoulder cover? I don't see that here. Okay, aiguillette. Can you say the word one more time? Aiguillette. Aiguillette. A I G U I L L E T T E. You are correct. Shratika. Patty makes it four for four in the first champion from New Jersey since 2006. We have now crowned four co-champions on this historic night at the Scripps National Spelling Bowl. And New Jersey may not be done yet. Soham Suktanker to make it five for five. So um, your word is pondalock. Pondalock, may I have the definition? A usually pear-shaped glass pendant used for ornamenting a lamp or chandelier. Pondalock, are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, pondalock. Pondalock, may I have the language of origin? Pond de Loc is from a French blend of two French words. Pond de Loc. P E N D E L O Q U E. Pond de Loc. You are correct. <laughs> five for five. <laughs> Soham Subtaker makes it 11 championships for the great state of Texas, and they have two more spellers left. Could be 13. Karthik Namadi made it 10 last year. And of the eight remaining spellers with an opportunity to become co-champions, the first five have made it. Unfathomable. Now, now Ubi J. Kodali to give Texas its 12th championship. Hi, Ubi J. Hello. Deep breath. Palama. Palama. Can you please give me the definition? Palama is the webbing on the feet of aquatic birds. Palama, can you please use a sentence? The palama on the feet of ducks and loons acts as a paddle when swimming, allowing them to move quickly through the water. Can you please give me all the information? Palama is a noun from an originally Greek word that was taken into Latin before becoming English. Palama is the webbing on the feet of aquatic birds. The palama on the feet of ducks and loons acts as a paddle when swimming, allowing them to move quickly through the water. Palama, P-A-L-A-M-A. -A. Correct. It's unbelievable. Now six for six. Now 12 champions for the state of Texas. Last year, Bobby J got Zeus for finishing third comes back co-champion 2019. And I think that cheer was loud enough for Zeus with that dog-eared hearing to hear way out in Flower Mound, Texas. Well, Zeus has long gone to bed. <laughs> six, that may have woken him up. Six first six. Christopher Sorrell. <laughs>
make it seven for seven. Talk about heart stuff. Hi, Christopher. Hi. Deep breath. <laughs> Cernuous. Cernuous, can I have the definition, please? Inclining, nodding, or drooping. It's used of a plant. Can I have the language of or origin, please? Latin. It's an adjective. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just cernuous. Cernuous. Is this from the Latin sir meaning above? Uh, meaning? Above? I don't see that here. Okay. Cernuous. Cernuous. C E R N U O U S. Cernuous. You are correct. Seven for seven. These eight spellers have been locked together in this three-round spell-off. We are one away. Rohan Raja from completing perfection. Again, no gutturals. <laughs> Odilic. Odilic, okay. Odilic, can I have the definition? Of or relating to a force or natural power thought by some to reside in certain individuals and things and to underlie hypnotism, magnetism, and some other phenomena. Can I have language origin? Uh, it's from a German part plus a Greek part plus an English combining form. Odilic. Does come the Greek word highly meaning wood or matter? Yes, it does. Odilic. Okay. Does come from Greek ik meaning other related to? Ik, yes. Odilic. O D Y L I C. Odilic. You are correct. It's complete. You're all champions of the 2019 Scripps National Spelling Bee. They will forever be remembered as the Elite Eight. The eight spellers that for three and a half hours took the best punch the dictionary had to throw at them. And this is the night, Paul Leffler, that the kids won the spelling bee. <laughs> Absolutely incredible, extraordinary orthographic orchestration all night long. You see the trophy celebration with the CEO Adam Simpson, chief executive officer of the EW Scripps Company. And there you have it, a picture that will be on the front page of every newspaper and website. Those eight spellers join together as co-champions. Remember, the design of that trophy is an homage to the very first champion in 1925. These eight have started a new era. Well, you, you all are amazing, absolutely amazing. Congratulations. On behalf of the EW Scripps Company, I am honored to present each of you with this amazing Scripps Cup. And of course, you are the 2019 Scripps National Spelling Bee Champions. Each of you will be getting a Scripps Cup and, of course, the full $50,000 prize cash prize. Congratulations. Congratulations to each of you. I mean, I believe I lost count. The fact of the matter, by my math, that's $400,000. Yeah, and they didn't know that until just now. They didn't know that until just now. We closed the spelling bee with 47 consecutively 47 straight words spelled correctly, five straight perfect rounds on a night, Paul Leffler, that, that the spelling bee is in fact changed forever. What happens to Olympic bro uh, records? They're broken, right? I mean, that's what we saw today. This was a record-breaking performance. Look at those names. If you know those young people, be ready to greet them when they come home. Give them that welcome they deserve. They were tireless. A great spelling word, indefatigable. They brought new definition to it tonight. Unbelievable what we saw here tonight. Eight co-champions. It's never been done. What we did here starting at 10 a.m. this morning, we are now past midnight. 
it's something I don't know that we'll ever see again. But you can you can bet one thing, Paul Leffler. This will start conversation of how things might change going forward. Yeah, what's it going to look like next year? We might have gone till next year if they kept spelling. All I can say is this. For Paul Leffler, I'm Matt Berry. What an incredible day. Your move, 93rd Spelling Bee, because the 92nd was historic.